This is the OTB Network. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Horses and Courses. 24 races to bring you from six racetracks. A full, full Thanksgiving holiday worth of races to bring you. Our first stop will be Thanksgiving Day down at Calder, the 29th running of the My Charmer Handicap, denomination 7 to 10. Uh, they're all in line. And they're off. Wasn't the best of starts for Trip for AJ. She's near the back of the pack. Grecian Maiden out and after the early lead. Denomination is right there. Call Me the Squeeze is on the stand side. And Trip for AJ is now weaving her way through. And she's just done amongst the leaders as they're very well grouped coming through the first furlong. Oregon Lady is fifth, but only about three lengths off the lead. Performing just outside of her. And Snowtop Mountain is the trailer. Looks like nobody really intent on the front end. And that leaves the favorite Denomination in a strange spot for her. She is in front early on but well within herself 26 and 2 was the opening quarter for the classy mare denomination as she and joe bravo take this field around the clubhouse turn denomination well held and leading three quarters of a length from call me the squeeze trip for aj looking for a seam down at the inside and she's also right there just off the flank of denomination going on to the back stretch run they're followed now by oregon lady she's a midfield fourth and less than three lengths from the front in behind them is performing Grecian Maiden down to her inside, and the Gray Philly Snow Top Mountain will have to pass them all. She is now seven lengths adrift of Denomination, who got the half mile in a very leisurely 53 seconds flat. Maybe a seam at the inside for Trip for AJ. She's trying to challenge Denomination going into the far turn. Call Me the Squeeze is also still right there. These three right across the course as they accelerate to the quarter pole. Oregon Lady is just in behind that front running wall of three. Snow Top Mountain starting to hit her best stride as she tries to close in from the back of the pack. Trip for AJ slipped through and she grabs the lead. Trip for AJ in front. Oregon Lady coming after her. Denomination's got to try to fight on a little better. Snow Top Mountain the stand side. Here comes Oregon Lady at Trip for AJ. Then Snow Top Mountain. Oregon Lady and Paco Lopez win the My Charmer. Tight for place and show. Trip for AJ, Snow Top Mountain or Denomination. And yes, Oregon Lady with a very late run under Paco Lopez scores the victory as the second, ch uh, second choice in the wager, returning $7.80 for a brief moment. It looked as though Abigail Fuller was going to get trip for A.J. home. Not the case. No top mountain. Finishes third. And Denomination, the 7-10 to 10 favorite, finishes fourth under Joe Bravo. On Saturdays, they kick off the final week. This year for racing at Calder, they had the Fred Hooper Handicap 2-5 to five, Mambo Meister. And they're off. And Telemberto gets the best break, and he goes right out for the lead. Sky Venture is running with him in the early going. Shell back toward the outside. Mambo Meister now moves up into third, and he's right up on the pace with one lap to go. They're followed now by Generalissimo, and also in that group, Flatter This is taken back. Geminator moves through down at the rail, and he is just in behind the leaders. Mambo Meisters four wide as they make their way around the turn. No speed at all from Stimulus Plan. Brian Terrio has him a far back early on, and already about a dozen lengths off the pace, and the pace just modest, 24 and one, carved out by the gray gelding Telemberto and Abby Fuller. It's Telemberto onto the backstretch, leading just a tight length from Sky Venture and Mambo Mambo Meister, who's still right up on the pace and now into second and only three quarters of a length back. Geminator is biding his time from fourth. He's just in behind that front running wall of three and Shellback is the one who's just outside of him. Then we come to Flatter This. He's in the clear, now has five lengths to make up. Generalissimo has dropped back just a bit. Nothing yet from Stimulus Plan. 49 and three, a tepid half mile and they are well bunched going to the far turn. And there goes Mambo Meister. Mambo Meister and Fernando Hara poking a nose in front of Telemberto. Sky Venture in a tough spot between those two. Geminator is crying out for room. He 
is covered up by Shellback, and now there he goes. And Jiminator guided to the outside by Joe Bravo and trying to get to Mambo Meister as they come to the top of the lane. Mambo Meister joined by Jiminator as they make the swing for home in the Hooper. And Jiminator has gone up to Poconos in front. Mambo Meister fighting tooth and nail from the inside. Stimulus plan has come from far back. He's now up into third. Mambo Meister and Fernando Hara. Jiminator and Joe Bravo. Jiminator ahead in front. Jiminator. Jiminator wins the Hooper. Mambo Meister second best. Tight for third. Stimulus plan or Sky Venture. Well, the only two horses in single digits on the odds board run 1-2 in reverse order as the exactly 5-2 second choice. Jiminator Joe Bravo, you see him very energetic as they were entering the lane all over Jiminator to run down Mambo Meister, the 2-5 favorite stimulus package, finishes third and even $7 for the Michael Trambetta runner winning this year's edition of the Fred Hooper. One of the long-standing traditional late-season races down at Calder, the mile and a half on the turf. We'll join it in progress. Winchester, the 6-5 to five favorite in the McKnight. Past the stands for the first time. Scottish Coast is in the second spot. Trust the deputy just on the outside. They're followed by Musketeer, who's only two and a half lengths from the lead. And Astral Thunder runs in the fifth spot. They're followed right now by Samard. Winchester is in between runners right now. Center divider has finally settled down just a bit. He's saving ground going to the second turn. And the trailer right now is Livingston Street. And he's got about 11 or 12 lengths to make up. The half mile was 49 and 4. Three quarters, 114 and 2. Two, and Scottish Coast takes the lead away from Gondorf, at least for the moment. Gondorf right back to him from the outside. And now these two are battling head and head on the front end. And Musketeer is sitting the trip just in behind them. No excuses for Musketeer. He is third and biding his time, just two lengths from the leaders. They're followed right now by Samard. He's worked his way into a good spot for it, just outside center divider. And Winchester is starting to get uncoiled. There goes Winchester in the green colors, and he's moving up into contention that flat mile was 139 and 2 and they move into the far turn Gondorf resumes the man command Samard is quickly on the attack from the outside now these two join forces as they come to the top of the lane Musketeer is hugging the hedge and he's coming on through to challenge Musketeer saved all the ground and he's the new leader of furlong out Samard is trying to run with him then, the, then we have center divider Winchester has to do a little bit better but it's Musketeer leading the way from Samard, Musketeer Samard, the two Atfield trainees, one, two in the McKnight. Musketeer won it, Samard was second, Winchester and center divider. And Musketeer won't need any of those excuses. Bobby as Musketeer gets the perfect trip under Luis Saez, scores the victory. The only four horses they bet in this race run in the Superfecta. You see Winchester did hit the board, but Samard, the other Roger Atfield trained horses, Roger Atfield wins two of the first three races on horses and courses this week and runs one, two in the McKnight. Thanksgiving Day, traditionally opening day at fairgrounds, although they've cheated a couple of times in the recent past, but back to opening up the fairgrounds for another racing season. Steve Aspiusen sends out the two to one favorite Joe Hollywood in the Thanksgiving handicap. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Thanksgiving handicap. Trubs broke well as they make their run up the back stretch. There's Joe Hollywood and Gantry up close with cash refund. In the lime green cap and blinkers too, here's Joe Hollywood. Joe Hollywood slanting toward the rail while clear for Rosie Noprovnik, racing a length and a half in front of cash refund. Toward the inside is Trubbs. Title volume is ranged up out wide to grab that fourth spot from Southern Style and Trubbs at the rail. Then we come back to Gold Czar and defending champion Mumbo Galliano Trails. The first quarter, 21 and four fifths seconds under three for longs to go. And now the duel develops between Joe Hollywood and Cash Refund as they come toward the quarter pole. Title volume looms that gray threat and Gantry right there toward the rail. Fourth past the quarter pole, then Southern Style fifth. 
They're well into the stretch, the half mile in 44 and 4, Cash Refund and Joe Hollywood. They battle into this final furlong on the outside gantry, farther out Southern style. Mambo Galliano on the extreme outside, inside the final half furlong. Cash Refund on the outside gantry, Cash Refund, gantry in a photo. It's a close call. Joe Hollywood third, Southern style fourth, Cash Refund and gantry hit it together. Cash refund people have to be sick at nearly 9 to 1 doing all the dirty work in the long stretch of the fairgrounds. It never appeared to me as if Gantry was going to get there. And heck, when they ran under the line, I didn't think Gantry had gotten there. But nonetheless, Gantry did get there, winning on Thanksgiving Day, sitting a good inside trip. Pace duel up front, the long stretch of the fairgrounds, but apparently it was just long enough to get home returning. $12.20 on Thanksgiving as we are underway at the fairgrounds. Next up, we're going to go over to Churchill Downs on closing day weekend. Their Thanksgiving Day stakes race, the Falls City Handicap. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Falls City Handicap. And Juanita flashes her usual early speed and gets the early lead. Giving chase is brushed by a star towards the outside. And a fleeting lady also engages out wide on the track as they pass now with a circuit ahead of them. And it's Juanita who's got the lead. A fleeting lady is racing in second. Arena Elvira to the inside rail now racing in just third position, just in advance of Riviera Chic, who's racing quite free in fourth position. Brushed by a star around the outside. Super Espresso is under wraps, followed then by Secret File to the inside. It's tea time, chilly at the back of the field, going down the back stretch in 24 and 2. And the leader is Juanita. Leads now by three parts of a length to a fleeting lady in second on the inside. In third is Arena Elvira. Towards the outside, making ground in fourth is Brushed by a Star, followed then by Riviera Chic. Towards the outside is Super Espresso. To the inside is Secret File, and still last, it's tea time. The half in 49 seconds flat, just over half a mile to go in the 96th running of the Grade 2, full City Handicap and Juanita now just injects a little bit of pace and a fleeting lady goes with her around the outside. A break now of two lengths opening up to Brush by a Star who is in third position. A further length and a half to Arena Elvira who's now ridden along by Junior Alvarado. Round the outside next to the field is Super Espresso as they now begin to make the turn in and Juanita the three-year-old has still got the lead to a fleeting lady racing in second. Arena Elvira is now being driven along towards the outside. It's tea time tries to make ground. They're deep inside the final full and a half. A fleeting lady on the inside now. Juanita down the outside. Arena Elvira. A fleeting lady. A slender lead on the outside. Arena Elvira. These two duel inside the final hundred yards. Arena Elvira who knows in front. A fleeting lady to the inside. It was Arena Elvira who gave trainer Bill Mott his fourth win in the Fall City Handicap. Well, a November to remember. For Bill Mott and Junior Alvarado, Arena Elvira beats Kent DeSormo and a fleeting lady. Arena Elvira, the even money favorite in Thursday's running of the Fall City, scores with a rather convincing neck victory over a fleeting lady. It's tea time, runs third, but Bill Mott's uh, juggernaut just having a sensational, sensational late run this season. Friday afternoon, the 137th running of the Grade 1 Clark. 13 entered, and once again at Churchill Downs, flat out is the choice. And they're off in the Clark handicap. It was a very level beginning. In the center, Mission Impassable is flashing early speed. And here goes Will's Wildcat to the outside. And it's Calvin Burrell and Will's Wildcat who go on. Mission Impassable racing in second. Then Wise Dan, who is taking a very strong hold on the outside in third. Towards the inside, Stately Victor is racing in fourth. Around the outside, Prayer for Relief is in fifth. The favorite flat out is in sixth. Towards the outside, General Quarters in seventh. Ruler on Ice is racing 
in eighth. Mr. Mardi Gras is in ninth as they go towards the back stretch. Then Alma Dioro towards the inside of demarcation at the back of the field. Pleasant Prince and Headache through a 23 and 4 opening quarter mile. And it's Will's Wildcat who leads the Clark Handicap field by a length and a half. In second position now is Mission Impassable and towards the outside is Wise Dan still extending Johnny V's arms. Towards the inside racing in fourth position is Stately Victor and towards the outside Prayer for Relief is racing in fifth. Ruler on Ice now in sixth. Flat out has just been niggled along by Axel East now racing in seventh with half a mile to go. Then towards the inside trying to pick up places Alma Dioro followed by Mr. Mardi Gras as they go into that far turn. Demarcation is losing ground and still struggling at the back of the field. Pleasant Prince and Headache. General Quarters another one who is now beginning to lose ground as they race now inside the final two and a half furlongs of the Clark Handicap and now striking for home. It is Mission Impassable to the outside. Wise Dan is in second. The inside Will's Wildcat is now back in third. Flat out an all out drive staying on in fourth followed by Ruler on Ice down the outside. Mr. Mardi Gras inside the final furlong now and it is Wise Dan and John Velasquez who go to a lead of two lengths inside the final 16th. It is Wise Dan clearing away to take the Clark handicap. Wise Dan wins in second mission impassable. Flat out was third. Mr. Mardi Gras was fourth. On the inside, Ruler on Ice followed next by Headache and then Alma Dioro. Well, many of us thought that there were multiple championships on the line uh, in the Clark handicap. Good luck with that uh, playing out, but this co-second choice Wise Dan with Johnny V scores a convincing, nearly four-length victory in Friday's Clark Handicap. Mission Impassable, the runner-up, and flat out, who has never shown an affinity for loving, Churchill Downs finishes a well-beaten third as the 2-1 to favorite. On closing weekend at Churchill Downs, we had two juvenile stakes races on Saturday, First, the Phillies in the Goldenrod on fire baby, the five to two choice. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Goldenrod. In the center, Jamra wins the break and On Fire Baby goes with her and it's now On Fire Baby who gets the lead in the hands of Joe Johnson. Jamra is racing in second but they're very tightly grouped so they go around the clubhouse turn. Customer base to the outside is racing in third and in fourth is Spring Eclipse. Around the outside is Glinda the Good. Then towards the inside, Spirited Mist and Golden History. A break then of a length and a half to Karlovi Vary and as they head towards the back stretch, backspin is detached by by five lengths and at the back of the field Gold Rush Girl. 24 and 3 for the opening quarter mile of the 68th running of the Grade 2 Golden Rod and the leader is On Fire Baby but only by a head. To the outside Jamra is keeping the pace honest in second. A break of a length and a half to Customer Base who races in third. On the inside Spring Eclipse in fourth. Glinda the Good is racing in fifth. Four wide Karlovi Vary now begins to make a move followed through by Golden History as they go into the far turn. To the inside Inside Spirited Miss, who's followed through by Gold Rush Girl. At the back of the field is Backspin, the half in 50 flat. They've got three eighths of a mile to go, and it is On Fire Baby who leads the way. Jamra is racing in second. Customer Base now in third. Then Glinda the Good, very wide on the track, is Karlovi Vary as they make the turn in the Golden Rod, and it's On Fire Baby who strikes for home. They've got a full and a half to go, and On Fire Baby is lit up now by Joe Johnson and she's scorching the dirt. She's gone clear by four lengths giving chase. Gold Rush Girl racing in second. Backspin from the back of the pack but there is no catching on Fire Baby. She wins the Pocahontas. Now she takes the Golden Rod. On Fire Baby. Much the best. Gold Rush Girl was second. Backspin in third and then staying on Golden History to the outside of Customer Base. Boy, talk about pace making the rice race. If you have a pen and paper next to you, 24 and 3, 50 flat, 114 and 3, 139 and 2. Wait till we compare that to the two year old Colts in a moment. But nevertheless, Joe Johnson puts on fire baby on top, never has to run very hard, never pressured, very comfortable, and then just kicked away from the entire field to win by a convincing six plus lengths as the favorite. 29 to 1 Gold Rush Girl, 25 to 1 uh, Backspin. They finished a well beaten second and third. 
But this year's goldenrod goes to On Fire Baby. Next up, time for the two-year-olds to go. The 85th running of the Kentucky Jockey Club, ever so lucky, offering a very impressive debut, the 8-5 to five favorite. And they're off in the Kentucky Jockey Club. In the centre, Fine was out alertly, and ever so lucky is sent on by Julien Leperu, and he's making use of his inside post, and now he moves a couple of horse widths off the rail, and ever so lucky is out in front as they go around the clubhouse turn. Gymologist to the outside, racing in second, and Fine is in third, and Sevy round the outside is racing in fourth position. Now he's taken third, and now he moves right round the outside to press for second position. Mr. Prankster towards the inside, Cyber Secret next, followed by Optimizer, then Africanist, and then sent on Earth, followed by Timely Tally, who's ridden with restraint, and so too is Attigan, the quarter, in 23 and 4. They go down the back stretch, and now they have got five-eighths ahead of them, and it is Sevy who has got the lead. Ever so lucky, now restrained back to second, Gemologist racing in third. Towards the wide outside, Cyber Secret is now in fourth. Fine is in fifth. On the inside, Mr. Prankster is racing in sixth. Seventh is Optimizer through the half of 47 and 2, and they go into the far turn in the 85th running of the Kentucky jockey club and the leader is the maiden Sevy. now in the two path here comes ever so lucky with gemologist round the outside now applying pressure optimizer comes on now in fourth position but he'll be at least four horses wide as he tries to challenge cyber secret is next as they turn for home and ever so lucky now is pressed every step of the way by gemologist and these two duel inside the final full and a half the far side rail ever so lucky towards the near side gemologist gemologist now has got a neck in front, ever so lucky is gamely rallying against the inside rail, back in third, optimizer from the clouds on the wide outside timely tally, gemologist has the lead on the drive to the line, gemologist wins the Kentucky Jockey Club in second ever so lucky, in third was timely tally, optimizer finished back in fourth, and fifth was Atty Gun. There were 21 runners in the two juvenile stakes races on Saturday at Churchill Downs, very, very very few had done more than breaking their maiden. Gemologist was one of those. Scores the victory ever so lucky in the second career start, ran terrifically. I thought the pace was about 12 to 15 lengths faster than the Phillies went in the golden rod. The final running time was probably in the neighborhood of seven to eight lengths faster. But Javier Castellano takes them out for Todd Pletcher, owned by Windstar Farm. Gemologist wraps up the two-year-old season rather nicely coming from off the pace and swooping up on the turn, returning $8.60 as the second choice in the wagering. The favorite ever so lucky runs. I thought a very, very good second at 8-5 to five and timely tally with Calvin Burrell runs third at 10-1. to one. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Northern California and Southern California. Welcome back to Horses and Course. We're going to make one quick stop in Northern California at Golden Gate on Black Friday. The 3-2 favorite, Bold Chieftain, as we join the All-American in progress. 
Dunmore East is second. Bull Chieftain a length and a half back third. He's been kept in a pocket by Skipshot. Bays has to stick towards the inside in the run by the quarter pole. Where our Nautique still the leader by a length to a hard ridden Dunmore East. Bull Chieftain's coming under a ride. He is not responding at the top of the stretch. And our Nautique has kicked away. Leads by two and a half lengths to Dunmore East. Bull Chieftain, Highway Bandit, Obango. It's our Nautique in front with a 16th left to go from Dunmore East. Bull Chieftain trying hard, getting into second, making late ground, photo finish, and Al Nautique held him to a neck. Al Nautique just beat Bull Chieftain with Dunmore East third, Obango fourth, then Highway Bandit and skip shot. Jerry Hollendorfer wins another one in Northern California. Our Nautique makes every poll a winning one, returning $11.86, just holding off. Bold Chieftain under Russell Bays as the 3-2 favorite. Now down to Hollywood Park. Seven races to bring you, five of which from the Autumn Turf Festival. But we kick it off on Thanksgiving's two-year-old with the Hollywood Preview. They're off. So Brilliant broke inward just a bit, but he's also sharp early alongside Hodge and Galix. Sheer talent moves through at the rail, then comes Muchos Besos and Empire Way, and the early trailer is Brother Francis. Three of them across the track up the back stretch. So Brilliant between horses. Galix three deep. Now these two are three quarters of a length in front of Hodge, who takes back, and he'll sit third at the rail in less than a length from the front. Sheer talent, Brother Francis and Muchos Besos are all three from the front, and Empire Way is at the back of the pack. Five lengths first to last past the half mile pole. In the 30th, Hollywood preview stakes and so brilliant is a neck in front. Hodge is at the rail now, and Hodge is within a neck of the lead. Then comes Galix, well placed. Oh, something's gone wrong with Galix. Galix has been pulled up out of the race. Galix has gone wrong around the far turn, and he's been pulled up out of the race. It looks bad for Galix. Darn it. They run around the top of the stretch, and the leader is so brilliant. He is just in front from Hodge at the rail to the outside, Brother Francis. Sheer talent, two from the front. Muchos Besos, Empire Way is the trailer. Seven lengths behind, so brilliant in Hodge. So brilliant, just in front. Hodge is second. Brother Francis comes with a run. He's trying to run down, so brilliant. So brilliant leads Brother Francis. Sheer talent might get third, so brilliant. Brother Francis, so brilliant. So brilliant, beat Brother Francis by a neck in the 30, 30th Hollywood preview. It is very close for third between Sheer Talent and Hodge. No good for Galix. And Bob Baffert sends out the winner. So brilliant, a gray or roan offspring from Medaglia Dior under Martin Garcia, the 7-5 to five favorite. They beat Brother Francis, and Hodge finishes third. And as you heard Vic Stauffer say, a uh, horrible incident with Gaelic on the uh, going into the far turn. Uh, the co-second choice at three to one. The other co-second choice runs last of the remainder of the field, Empire Way. Friday afternoon, the Autumn Turf Festival got underway. Two-year-old fillies in the Mies. Even money, more than love. They're up. Starship Flare and Ray's Unbridled Faith. More than love between horses. These three fast. Regal Betty going to back off just a bit and angle to the rail. Then comes your special day in Island Paradise, and the early trailer is Katie's 10. Starship Flare will take them to the back stretch from More Than Love, who settles into a rhythmic stride in second. Starship Flare leads a length and a half. More Than Love is second, the same margin to Regal Betty and Ray's Unbridled Faith, together third and fourth. It's three lengths to your special day for Mike Smith. In the clear, running fifth and about six from the front. Then Island Paradise and Katie's 10. Eight lengths from first to last, up the back stretch in the 20th, Miesk. Starship Flare trying to go it all the way. Now two lengths in front of More Than Love, who has not been asked to run yet by Ramon Dominguez. And More Than Love is looming large in second, just a length and three quarters now from the front. Regal Betty and Ray's Unbridled Faith are third and fourth with three to come. Your special day still has five lengths to make up. Island Paradise is still seven behind. Inside of Katie's 10, they round the far turn, and here comes More Than Love. When they straighten away in the Miesk, More Than Love could very well be in front. 
Starship Flare just ahead in front. More Than Love alongside and these two set away. It's now five back to Regal Betty. Final furlong. Starship Flare is tough to get by. More Than Love going to have to lay it down in the final 16th. Starship Flare. More Than Love to the outside. Starship Flare still ahead. More Than Love a final surge. More Than Love Starship Flare. More Than Love. The 20th Miestes goes to More Than Love, and she had to run her heart out to beat an ultra game starship. Flair, those two fillies ran lights out. And Ramon Dominguez on the backside, I would have thought he felt very confident as he was staring at Starship Flair about a length in front of him, the nearly 30 to 1 shot. But then Starship Flair had a lot to say in the lane, but more than love had one final jump to score the even money victory for John Terranova in Friday's edition of the Mies. Up next, three year olds and up, Phillies and Mares in the grade one matriarch, four to five, never retreat. They're off. Summer's soiree caught a flyer and goes for the front. Quiet Oasis broke well, but is wrangled back. Doesn't want to show that much speed. Never retreat. We'll be three wide at the clubhouse turn. Unbridled Humor is next. Just in behind the leaders. Then Gypsy's warning. Star Billing has made it all the way over to the rail. Madera Castana is second to last, and the trailer is up in time as they turn into the backstretch. Summer Soiree, an easy lead now, and she is doing it smartly. Summer Soiree leads. Quiet Oasis who's still a headstrong and tugging second. Summer Soiree a length and three quarters from Quiet Oasis who will not settle in second. Unbridled Humor is third. Never retreat. Well placed for Leperu. Fourth and about four from the front in the clear. Then comes defending champion Gypsy's Warning just inside of her star billing. They're both five and a half off the lead. At the back of the pack are up in time and Madera Castana past the half mile. In the 30th Matriarch and Summer Soiree is aggressive now. She goes into the far turn with a three length advantage over unbridled humor and quiet oasis together second and third never retreat is fourth only three lengths off the lead star billing just inside of her never retreat is not cornering well never retreat did not corner well and that cost her a couple lengths and at the back of the pack up in time has unseated martin garcia up in time lost the rider final furlong of the matriarch summer soiree star billing trying to pull off a monster upset from the inside down to these two Summer Soiree, Star Billing trying to squeeze through and win the Matriarch, Star Billing! Star Billing got by Summer Soiree in the final strides to win the 30th Matriarch, maybe never retreat for third. And some of the best silks in the game with that Hollywood reel on the back. Star Billing scores the upset at nearly 11 to 1 on the inside. Summer Soiree, a brilliant start, and Gabrielle Saez tried to get this three-year-old all the way around the racetrack, but the three-year-olds run 1-2. Run you heard Never Retreat, who was coming out of the first lady, have trouble on the turn for Julian Leperu. She finishes third as the 4-5 to five favorite, but John Sheriff sends out star billing to win the grade one matriarch. On Saturday afternoon, we're going to have sprinters on the poly track in the Vernon Underwood. Euro ears coming out of a disappointing performance in the Breeders' Cup, 8-5. to five. They're off. Carbonite and M1 rifle, Euro ears hard scent. Quiet Invader close up without being sent. Coming to the top and Pacific Ocean, Euro ears is fourth last early. No speed on today. Irrefutable is next, then Canonize, and the trailer is Shediac. Pacific Ocean rides the rail to the lead from Quiet Invader. Pacific Ocean leads three quarters of a length. Quiet Invader is second, two and a half lengths to Comet to the top, who races in third. M1 Rifle is fourth and about five and a half or six from the front. Euro Ears ridden along outside of him, seven lengths behind. Carbonite's at the rail. He's got eight to come. Irrefutable is ten off the lead. Canonize inside of him, and the trailer is Shediac, and the leader is Pacific Ocean trying to win it right now. Pacific Ocean at the top of the stretch has built up a two-length advantage on Quiet Invader in second. Comet to the top going up and down right now. Euro Ears outside of him. Pacific Ocean final furlong three lengths in front. Quiet Invader is second. Euro Ears is running a big race from off the pace today into second, but three and a half behind Pacific Ocean. Irrefutable at the rail. Pacific Ocean. 
Pacific Ocean wins the 31st Vernon O. Underwood Stakes by two and a half over irrefutable. Close for third in one rifle and Euro ears. And Joel Rosario from the rail. After a rough start, makes every poll a winning one, returning $16.80. This offspring of Ghost Zapper defeats Irrefutable M1 Rifle, finishes third. And the 8-5 to five favorite Euro Rios checks in fourth. And going from uh, competitive in the top of the stretch to last, comma to the top, making the first start since the Kentucky Derby. On Saturday, one of the few stakes races they brought uh, to the fall from the spring summer at Hollywood Park. The Citation, Even Money, Geronimo. They're at the post. They're off. War Elements, slow into stride, not Bob Blackjack. He goes right to the front. Assessment comes away running in second. Then comes to the outside and John Johnny Jack. Geronimo between horses. Calamanco at the rail. Make music for me. War Element now midfield and going to be four wide at the clubhouse turn. War Element getting a bad go of it in the first quarter mile. Lee Roy's Dynamo is second to last and the trailer is Buenos Dias as they move to the back stretch. Bob Blackjack is the leader. He's established a two and a quarter length margin over Assessment who tracks for Martin Garcia in second. Then comes John Johnny Jack between horses, Calamanco at the rail, and a three-wide war element. They're all only two and a quarter from the front. Geronimo is in sixth, but he's only four from the front. He's two in front of Make Music for Me. Three and a half back to the two trailers, Leroy's Dynamo and Buenos Dias up the back stretch. A half mile to run in the 34th Citation Handicap. Bob Blackjack trying to go it all the way. He is three quarters of a length in front of Assessment in second. Then comes John Johnny Jack, third and two from the front. Bob Blackjack's back in front by two, and now he's sprinting to the quarter pole. Bob Blackjack trying to win the Citation right here and now still work to do war element is three wide at the quarter pole only two from the front geronimo is weaving between horses here's geronimo two and a half off the lead he's got momentum top of the stretch john johnny jack has taken over the lead calamanco rides the rail war element geronimo in the center and here comes geronimo and he blows by and opens up four at once geronimo yes Wow, big win. Geronimo and Garrett Gomez win. The 34th citation, War Element, great second, Calamaco third. And the 8-5 to five favorite, not even money favorite, Geronimo makes it look so very easy. Garrett Gomez had him moving very well. Might have lost a couple of feet because of that energy on the turn, but boy, when he straightened her way for home and leveled out, he just floored them. Comes from the middle of the pack to score rather convincingly by nearly three lengths. War Element finishes third. Calamanco, uh, second, excuse me, Calamanco checks in third. Up next, continuing the Autumn Turf Festival, two-year-olds in the generous stakes battle force the even money chalk. They're at the post. They're off. Motown men and God even shows speed. Handsome Mike's on the move from the inside, and here's Handsome Mike fast to challenge. Motown men, God even is in that battle early as well, and these three go extremely fast. Meanwhile, Senior Rain has bolted at the clubhouse turn. Something's gone wrong with Senior Rain, and he's bolted and being pulled up. To the back stretch they run, and the top three are absolutely flying. It is Motown Men Between Horses, Handsome Mike at the rail, and Got Even, and the three of them op opened up about eight lengths on Stony Fleece. Another length and a half to Major Magic, three and a half more to Blue White Fire, and outside of him, Battle Force. Battle Force got to be about 13 from the front, but that might be the perfect spot to be as fast as they're going up front. And the trailer is Devil in Disguise, less than a half mile to go in the 29th Generous, and they go into the far turn. Motown Men and Handsome Mike, they continue to trade punches. Motown Men outside Handsome Mike at the rail. They are now two lengths in front of God Even. Next, it's Stony Fleece, and Stony Fleece is coming after the front runners. So is Major Magic, and so is Battle Force. Front runners are coming. They're all within three and a half of the front. Handsome Mike, Motown Men, Stony Fleece gets first crack, and he's within a length and a half of the lead. Major Magic, Battle Force still five lengths behind, and Stony Fleece has in 
come alongside Handsome Mike and Stony Fleece has taken over the lead. Battle Force is now in gear, but he's two and a half behind. Handsome Mike runs his heart out at the rail. Stony Fleece is going to win the generous. Stony Fleece beat Handsome Mike, who ran great in second. Battle Force was third, and Motown men finished fourth. Stony Fleece, Joel Rosario, $19.60. They win the 29th running of the generous stakes with Handsome Mike finishing second. The even money favorite, Battle Force, checks in third. And wrapping up the Autumn Turf Festival at Hollywood Park. I will mention this will be the fourth horse uh, to break down over the weekend at Hollywood Park. One of them just clipped heels and threw Martin Garcia. But let's see, the even the three to one favorite, Wilcox in the favorite in the Hollywood Derby from Sunday night. They're off. Ultimate Eagle is absolutely sent early. Ultimate Eagle fast and to the front. Imagining and Surrey Star are next. Then comes Irish Art. Slumber and Cloud Man follow. Then between horses is Western Aristocrat. Casino Host and Venomous are next. Then Cozy Kitten. And the early trailer is Wilcox in. Ultimate Eagle wanted the lead, but he's got company up front. They are going very fast for a mile and a quarter. Ultimate Eagle leads. And he's a length and a quarter now in front of Imagining, who is wrangled back off that front runner in second. Irish Art is in third, and he's about two from the front. Surrey Star settles in in fourth with three and a half to make up. Then comes Western Aristocrat and Cloudman. Cloudman is fifth now in the Moss Colors, and he's six lengths behind. A gap of two lengths, too. A lineup of three. Cozy Kitten between horses. Venomous to the outside, and further out is Casino Host. Then comes Slumber. He is second to last and about 10 from Ultimate Ego. And Wilcox in. And Robbie Alvarado at the back of the pack. 12 lengths first to last up the back stretch in the 70th Hollywood Derby. Ultimate Ego trying to slow it down now a bit. He is a length and a quarter in front of Imagining in second. Surrey Star races in third, but he's pushed along to maintain that position. Irish Art is fourth now in five from the front. Cloud Man goes by him from the inside, and Cloud Man is now five off the lead. Then comes Cozy Kitten. Venomous in the red cap is looking for racing room, and something's gone wrong with Cloud Man. Cloud Man has been pulled up around the far turn. Cloud Man was pulled up. So they run towards the top of the stretch. It is still Ultimate Eagle in front to the outside and imagining. Venomous has moved into third and he's closing, but he is six lengths behind Ultimate Eagle, who is running his heart out. Ultimate Eagle, imagining, has a chance to get him in the final 16th of a mile. Ultimate Eagle reaching for the wire. Imagining to the outside, Western Aristocrat. Ultimate Eagle goes all the way to win. The 70th Hollywood Derby goes to Ultimate Eagle. He beat Imagining. What a weekend for B.J. Wright and Mike Pender. They win the Citation and the Hollywood Derby. Yes, they do, Vic. But Martin Pedroja from the outside, number 10 post position, sends Ultimate Eagle to the front and then sends him to the winner's circle, returning $31.40 upset in the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll take a look back at the holiday racing from the Big A.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Time to turn our attention to the six races from the Big A. And on Thursday, they ran the 98th running of the Fall Highway. Plenty of scratches in here. Four out of the five horses between two to one and three to one. Unfortunately, we do have a breakdown in this race, and only two pounds separates the field in Thursday's Fall Highway. And they're off. Nathan's HQ breaks on top. From the inside, Sunrise Smarty is there. General Maximus is in the early mix, along with Escrow Kid. Letting the others fight it out is Flat Bold. Up the backstretch. Now three of them in a torrid fight for the lead here. Sunrise Smarty down inside. Escrow Kid between horses. General Maximus makes it three, going head-to-head -head through a quarter and 21 and two-fifths seconds. Scorching pace out there. Nathan's HQ and Flat Bold is a very fast pace to close into. Oh, pulled up there. General Maximus has been pulled up. General Maximus has been pulled up. They're moving toward the top of the stretch. Sunrise Smarty. Sunrise Smarty, the leader, turning for home. Escrow Kid second. Flat Bold is making a move inside. A wild and punishing half of 44 and one-fifth seconds. Now it's Sunrise Smarty to catch. Flat Bold, who was well behind that toward pace early on, is getting closer. On the outside, Nathan's HQ, but it's still Sunrise Smarty. Sunrise Smarty is still holding on. Nathan's HQ, a final try on the outside. Flat Bolt flattens out, and it is Sunrise Smarty who has a courageous front-running victory here in the Fall Highway. Final time was 9-4. and four. Finishing second was Nathan's HQ, Flat Bolt third. And from the rail, Sunrise Smarty, the second choice at a little bit under 5-2, to two, scores the victory for Ramon Dominguez, West Point Thoroughbred, and Mike Hushin wins his first of the weekend. On Black Friday, we have the 72nd running of the Grade 2 Mile. Go for one. All due respect, even money. They're in the gate, and they're off. And a good beginning for all due respect is out there quickly down on the inside. Lovely Lil is there. And there's Katie now is up with the early leaders as well as CeCe's pal. Risky Rachel is in behind them running along in fifth, followed by Persuading. And it's two lengths back to the two trailers, Indian Legend and Spa City Princess. So here's Lovely Lil coming up right next to all due respect. Together they run a quarter and 23 seconds flat. Risky Rachel just in behind the lead, rating comfortably. While third, Katie now alongside her, fourth. CC's pal and persuading fourth and fifth. A break of three back to Indian Legend, a break of four to Spa City Princess. Racing for the far turn, and Junior Alvarado's got a pretty good hold there of all due respect, who's right up with Lovely Lil. Together they run a half and a solid 45 and four fifth seconds. Risky Rachel, Katie now, and CC's pal right there in behind them and down on the inside, persuading. Less than three furlongs to go. All due respect. Still not particularly ridden hard. On the inside, Lovely Lil. And they're off the turn and into the stretch. Persuading cuts the corner. Risky Rachel's in between them. Top of the stretch here. Lovely Lil holding on to that lead. Lovely Lil in front. All due respect is still second. Fighting hard, but still a length and a half behind. And then persuading Risky Rachel. Katie now on the outside. Lovely Lil. All due respect, doing her best. Her best is second best today. It is Lovely Lil, the winner. All due respect and CeCe's pal. Well, Lovely Lil took basically 26 and a half seconds to run the final quarter of a mile, so everybody had a chance to get in the pool, but no. Lovely Lil, Mike Hush and Barry Shorts, Cornelio Velasquez, $33.80. Eighty cents to win Friday's Go for One handicap. Moving on to Saturday, the final big day of racing in New York. First up, two-year-old fillies in the Demoiselle, six to five, disposable pleasure. They're in the gate, and they're off. A bad stumble at the break there for the favorite, disposable pleasure, who was left in last. Moving for the clubhouse turn, and it's We Party to be the leader. Brown Eyed Girl, or rather, Brown Eyed Dance runs along second on the inside. Wildcat Smile is third. Far outside, Lady Coeba moves up, and on the far outside, it's undeniable. Then there's a break of six, 
Back to Captivating Lass in a break of three to Bourbon Street Girl, followed closely on the outside by a walk in the moonlight. Then Disposable Pleasure, who had that disastrous start at the back of the pack with Long Shot Dreaming of Kara. Up front, it is We Party. We Party through a quarter up in 23 and four fifth seconds. Lady Coeb is there. So, too, Indeniable on the outside. Wildcat Smile. And Brown Eyed Nance with the Vanguard right there, too, down on the inside. It's a break of about seven now. Back to Captivating Lass, who's dropped almost 10 from the lead. 48 and 1 was the opening half mile. In the meantime, Disposable Pleasure still back there in last place with a half mile to go. Into the far turn. We party on top and stable mate Lady Coeba. They're 1 2 around the far turn. Brown Eyed Nance is there. Then Wildcat Smile dropping back into an elbow. And then it's Bourbon Street Girl on the outside. Disposable Pleasure has now gotten within four lengths for the lead. And she's a handful as they come to the top of the stretch. And now the field turns for home. We party Lady Goeba, Wildcat Smile, Bourbon Street Girl there on the far outside. Disposable Pleasure is coming on through between horses. Wildcat Smile, narrow lead. Disposable Pleasure has taken the lead. A remarkable run. Disposable Pleasure and Wildcat Smile. They're coming down to the finish. Disposable Pleasure, Wildcat Smile. Photo finish. Photo finished Disposable Pleasure, ran a terrific race in the Demoiselle, and so did Wildcat Smile. They were right there together at the end. Bourbon Street Girl, third. And in my opinion, if I ever deserve to lose a photo finish against a 6-5 to five favorite, holding an opinion on Wildcat Smile, it was in the Demoiselle, an incredible performance. Disposable Pleasure last at the start after a horrible kiss the dirt start and then taken up sharply on the turn. Rallies on the inside to beat me and others on Wildcat Smile and Bourbon Street Girl at better 30 to 1. Finishes third, Todd Pletcher, Ramon Dominguez. Up next, two year olds in the Remsen. And they're off. Our entourage and super speedy. To their inside, it's El Padrino as they race for the clubhouse turn. Super speedy up for the lead. Our entourage second on the outside, down on the rail. It's El Padrino running third early on here. Spite City will be forwardly placed on the outside fourth. Mucho Mas Macho, fifth and in between horses. And Manager Count has been maneuvered to the inside in the early stages here, running along in six, five and a half lengths from the lead. And then it's O Prado again on the outside, now running along in seventh, followed by Scandarist Star, eighth. And then it's Stefanozzi, second to last, and the trailer's done talking. Field moving up the backstretch, 24 and 1 was the opening quarter mile. Super speedy, narrowly, rating comfortable while in front. There's only mild pressure here from our entourage. Sensing that slowdown of the pace, there goes Kent to Sormo and O Prado again. They're up to be third now on the outside. And El Padrino continues to ride the rails with a half mile remaining here. A very moderate half, 49 and 4 fifths seconds. Super Speedy still in control around the far turn. And now our entourage is ratcheting up that pressure. Oh, Prado again on the outside third. El Padrino's had a beautiful trip so far. He's just in behind the lead. Scatter a star has room down toward the inside. And then it's Mucho Mas Macho on the far outside. And then moving on through in between horses. Here comes manager count now with the bid. Still at the back of the pack, Stefanozzi and done talking, and it's wide open at the top of the stretch. Our entourage battling all the way with Super Speedy. Those two still with something left for the last furlong here. Oh, Prado again on the outside is third, followed by El Padrino, fourth. Late run, done talking, down to the finish. Here comes Oh, Prado again. Oh, Prado again. The winner of the Remsen by three quarters of a length, the three way photo for second. Super speedy El Padrino and done talking. Well, pace wise in Kentucky, the girls went dawdling compared to the boys. In New York, it was the reverse. The teletimer tells me this was almost a turf race in Old Prado again, an offspring of El Prado, ridden by Kent DeSormo, trained by Dale Roman, scores the $16.80. Upset Super Speedy under Jose Lescano tries to make every pole a winning one. And El Pradrino, the 5-2 favorite, checks in third. Next up, 
the 23rd running of the Grade 1 Cigar Mile uh, to honor and serve the even money choice. And they're off. Calibra Choa looking for that early lead. Sangaree's got some speed on the outside. To honor and serve is up and in between those two. Then Hainesfield followed by Caixa Electronica. Him book a little awkward in the early going is the trailer. So to honor and serve comes out to make the lead and made it rather easily. Sangaree's there on the outside. Calibra Choa broke on top. In behind the lead down inside. First quarter, 23 seconds flat. So it is. Kali Brachoa who comes on to grab that lead again to honor and serve. Those two sparring for the lead down the back stretch run. Sangaree in the clear on the outside. Hainesfield under a long hold at the rail. Kaish Electronic in between them. A break of nine. Back to him book. They hit the half mile pole. Kali Brachoa and to honor and serve 45 and three. Was that a half mile strong fractions through the opening half mile here. Sangaree perched just outside the ladies third. In between her is Kaish Electronica. Then down inside, it's Hainesfield. Himbook now starting to find him his best stride. And here comes Himbook launching a bid just outside the quarter pole. Kali Brachoa spurred on by Cornelio Velasquez. To honor and serve is right alongside him. He's still under a hand ride as they come into the final of Furlong. And now to honor and serve is called on by Jose Lascano. And they now take the lead. But Himbook so far behind earlier is coming up late on the outside. Time running out for Himbook. It is to honor and serve. Himbook and Kali Brachoa to honor and serve is the winner of the Cigar Mile. Himbook second, Kali Brachoa and Hainesville. To honor and serve, a grade one winner under Jose Liscano up on the pace. Scores the victory by nearly two lengths. The offspring of Bernardini owned by Live Oak Plantation. Trained by Bill Mott. And wrapping up the grade one racing in New York for approximately four and a half months, three-year-olds in the Gazelle, awesome feather, three to two. Well, they're ready for the start. And they're off. Savvy Supreme comes out in stride. And Brian's jewel to her inside, to her outside, awesome feather right there and farthest out. Love and pride as they make their way for the first turn. Savvy Supreme down inside, love and pride on the outside, awesome feather in between those two. Just in behind Brian's jewel. On the fence and fourth, draw it fifth on the outside. Three lengths back to our Gypsy Gold. And another four back to Daring Reality and Miss Valentine's the trailer. Love and Pride, the leader, and a very keen, awesome feather. She's tossing her head about, resenting the restraint of Jeffrey Sanchez. 24 and four was that tepid opening quarter mile. So down the back stretch run. Love and Pride leads it. Awesome feather. Up alongside now, bidding for the lead. And Savvy Supreme third toward the rail. Draw it is now fourth. Brian's Jewel backing up in the fifth. Our Gypsy Gold takes to her outside. Big break. Eight lengths back to Daring Reality and Miss Valentine. 48 and four was the half mile. Four and a half furlongs to go. Love and Pride still the leader. And the favorite, Awesome Feather, still glued to her as they move into the far turn. Three lengths back to Draw it and to her inside. Savvy Supreme's now fourth. It's another three and Brian's Jewel asks for a run, takes to the outside, fifth in our Gypsy Gold. Three furlongs for the line, three quarters of a mile up in one, 12 and two. It's love and pride by a neck. Awesome feather comes to the quarter pole, second, and the field turns for home. Awesome feather on the outside. Love and pride down on the rail. Head to head as they come to the final furlong here. Draw it, runs in third. Inside the final eighth. And it is Awesome Feather getting away from the field now. Love and pride. Draw it. Miss Valentine down to the finish. Awesome Feather. Perfect. Five lengths back to a tight photo for a second there between Draw It and Love and Pride. Daring Reality was fourth. Awesome Feather, unblemished still, trained by Chad Brown, owned by Frank Stronach. The 3-2 to two favorite wins the 116th running of the Gazelle by better than a handful. Draw it finishes second. Love and Pride finishes third. That wraps up the holiday fest of horse racing. Remember, they moved to the inner dirt track at Aqueduct on Wednesday. Tampa Bay Downs and Gulfstream Park open on Sunday. Please join us Monday next for the next edition of Horses and Courses.